what we're going to be looking at today is um, we're going to find volume, but from um, a different way. And the way we're going to do it is we're not going to be revolving like we've been doing the last couple days, but instead we're going to be drawing these different shapes. And this is the base. What you're seeing right here is the circle, which is the base. And we're going to draw like e either from top to bottom or right to left. And we're going to show a part of the shape that we are going to um, um, use to find the air to find volume. So if you look at these, okay, we're going to use squares, right? So all of these chords right here, these are these line segments, all represent different um, squares. And this is the side of the square. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to tilt this. Okay. And then we're going to see, I'm going to build four squares. So it's like four squares are going to come out of this and that's those. Okay. And then I'm going to sweep one. So you see like what all of them are going to look like. And you start to see what the shape looks like by watching these points right here. And then it's going to come back down and there's, Right, the, the square comes down to a point right there at the end and it's at a point right here at the other end. So I'm gonna stop sweeping that. This is what the solid looks like. So we're trying to find the volume of this. And basically we ha what we have to do is come up with a way to find the area of each of these squares and the thicknesses are gonna be our DX in this case. So let's, there's what, that's what the solid looks like. There's four squares within it, okay? All right, so let's look, take a look at another one. Um, I'm gonna do um, a circle with isosceles right triangles next, okay? So same circle, we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be perpendicular to the x-axis, so we're gonna draw them this way. The base of the isosceles triangle, and you're gonna have some problems like this um, on the homework, and we have an example I did with you guys too. But this, okay, from this point to this point down here, we're gonna see um, these these segments, but these segments now represent a leg of an isosceles right triangle. So what's going to happen is um, on one side or the other, what we're going to do is we're going to come up the same amount and then connect them. Okay, so um, we're going to drop this flat, and then there's four of the isosceles right triangles, just four random representatives of of them. We can sweep this. And so you, we sweep across from, we're gonna start creating these right isosceles right triangles over here in this negative R, and we're gonna stop making them here at this R. And this is what the solid would look like as you go across. And then we're gonna show the solid. That's what the solid looks like. And then there's four of those isosceles right triangles. Different different um, um, boundaries on this next one, okay? Here we have um, a, a right triangle, okay? And we are going to do them so that they're, um, the base, they're gonna be semicircles, okay? And this time, we're gonna draw them horizontally, okay? So I'm gonna show my segments, there's my segments, they're drawn horizontally. So for this one, okay, because they're horizontal, we'd have to take the right side minus the left side to get these distances, okay? I'm gonna drop it flat like I've been. I'm gonna show you five of them. That's five of them right there. I'm gonna sweep one of them, and over here it's gonna to come to a point. So their biggest, the semicircles are gonna be biggest back here and smallest up here. So this is what the solid looks like. There's five of five random ones, like the really thin slices. Okay, and that's what it's gonna look like. All right, so that's what we're gonna be doing. We're, so we're gonna get different shapes and we're gonna be um, putting one side of them or possibly a diagonal, all right? On this region, I'm gonna rotate back. Let me just reset this. Okay. So we're gonna be making these these um, these different shapes with using areas of known cross sections, okay? And so this orange line, right, this this segment right here represents like a um, a base of a rectangle, a side of a square, 
the leg of an isosceles right triangle, diameter of a semicircle, and to get that diameter or base, we're gonna have to, in this case, we'd have to go to the right minus the left. If we were doing it vertical, we would do top minus bottom, okay? So like I showed you on the computer program, right? What we need to do is to find the volume of solids with known cross sections. We gotta find the area of that cross section, okay? And then we're gonna multiply by the thickness. So this is the thickness right here, okay? And then same thing here, area of the cross section, dy. Now this would be if they're perpendicular to the x-axis, okay? And this would be if they're perpendicular to the y-axis. So the thicknesses, if you're drawing them, you know, you have your x and y axis and you're drawing um, the leg or the base or the diameter, if it's perpendicular to the, to the y-axis, then the thicknesses of these shapes are all gonna be dy, okay? So just going over, okay, to how to get the area, okay? This would be the base and this would be the height. So the area of a rectangle is base times height. Okay, and so it would be that this base right here would be sitting on the region that they're talking about, all right? And then they tell you how to get the height. Um, sometimes, you know, it's, it's half the base. They'll tell you somehow in order to get the height because if it's a rectangle, these are gonna be different, okay? For a semicircle, it's gonna be the diameter that is sitting in that region, okay? That's sitting on the XY plane. And then this would be the diameter. Okay, so we'd have to, we, we're going to have to use the diameter in order to find this area. Well, what do we know? We know the area is for a semicircle is going to be one half pi times r squared, right? But this isn't r, this is d, okay? But how do you get r? Well, r would just be whatever um, d is divided by two. So this becomes the area is equal to one half pi times d over two squared. So this is gonna be you know, the top minus bottom or the right minus left. Same thing here, this, this, this length right here is gonna be that top minus bottom or the right minus left, okay? For a square, all right, each side's the same, okay? So this region right here, this length right here is the one that's gonna probably be sitting in the xy plane, okay? And so the area of a square is equal to, well, this the two sides are the same, so that would just be s times s, or the area is s squared. You would just need to square this length, and again, you would get this length by taking like top minus bottom or right minus left, all right? For this square right here, sometimes it's, they give you the diagonal is sitting in the region, okay? And um, that would be D, okay? So we need to figure out what this would be in terms of D, because I really, it, I would need this side, okay? And this side, all right? Well, what do I know? I can relate these by the Pythagorean theorem because this is a right triangle. So side squared plus side squared would equal D squared. Okay, and then side squared plus side squared would be two S squared is equal to D squared. And then um, to, get, to get our S, because that's what we would need out of D, all right, we would divide by two and it would be S squared is equal to D squared divided by two. And then we would need to square root. Now, okay, maybe I didn't make this clear, but the reason I'm getting S is because I know the area is this S times this s right for a square so if i square root both sides i know the side is the square root of d squared over two actually i wouldn't even need to do that right because right here i have the area because the area is side squared right so if you did it this way you would do okay the area would be side squared so it'd be the square root of d squared over two squared Okay, and so that would give you an area of just d squared over two. You could have, I didn't even need to do this. I just realized it as soon as I jumped into it. Um, this right here, because s squared is the area, right? That's the area right there, right? Okay, so the area is d squared over two. I just did a little extra the work that I really didn't need to do, okay? All right, then this next one for the isosceles right triangle, all right? 
this is the base of or a leg of the right triangle. Now, because it's isosceles, that, um, that means these two legs have to be the same length. So if this is the base, this is also the base. So um, remember for a triangle, the area is one half base times height. Well, this, this base and the height are the same thing. They're the same length. So this would be the base and this would be the height, but since it's isosceles, they're the same. So this would be one half um, base times base or base squared. And so it would be this base right here that would be sitting in the region. And so we would have to do right minus left or top minus bottom to get the B. But then we also know that this would be the same, okay? And so, and I don't think I said it here, but um, right here, to get, they would give you the, they would say like the diagonal sit in this region, the diagonal of the square. And so to get this diagonal, you would have to go right minus left or top minus bottom to get this length right here. And then to get the area, you'd have to do this. You'd have to square the D. Whatever this length is, you'd have to square it and divide by two, all right? Okay, so that's basically the area formulas, okay? And that's what we're gonna integrate. And then the thickness of these is gonna be your DX or DY, all right? So for this first problem, okay, the, let the region R be the area enclosed by the function f of x equals 2x squared. That's the parabola and g of x is equal to 3x, so that's the line, okay? And let's take a look here, all right? Right in here, the, the f of x function looks like it's the bottom function, right? So I'm gonna label this one as f of x is equal to 2x squared, and g of x is 3x, so that's this one. Okay, and if the region R is the base of a solid such that each cross section perpendicular to the x-axis, so we're going perpendicular, so we're going vertical, perpendicular to the x-axis is a square, find the volume of the solid, all right? So we're gonna make squares. So all of these are gonna be squares. So that means this distance right here is the side of a square. So that's S. So my area is gonna look like this. That's one, that's one of these squares. And this right here is my S and that corresponds to this side right here, okay? So this would be sitting right here and then coming up out of my paper, okay? So what's the area of this, right? This is S also, right? Because it's, because it's a square. So the area is equal to S squared. So now what is S though? Okay, so in this case, S would be the top minus the bottom. So that top is G of X. So that would be 3X minus the bottom, which is 2X squared. So that's my side length, okay? So the area would be side squared. So that in this case, it'd be 3X minus 2X squared. And then we would need to square that because that's my side squared. All right. Now, where do we start making these? Okay. So right here, we can tell, all right, right here is going to be zero, zero. All right. Now, what's the coordinates of this point, right? So we need to solve that, right? Because I can't tell. You can't read it. All right. So we need to put that into our calculator and we need to come up with, with this. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve... 2x squared equals 3x. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know what? And I'm going to actually, I'm not going to use a calculator because this one's going to be pretty easy to do by hand. If they're easy to do by hand, you might as well do it by hand. So I'm going to subtract 3x. So this would be 2x squared minus 3x is equal to zero. We can factor out an x and we'd be left with 2x minus 3 equals zero. So that'd be x equals zero. And this one would be 2x minus three equals zero, which add three and divide by two, we get x is equal to three halves. So this point is zero, zero. This point has an x coordinate of three halves. So that means the volume of this is equal to the integral 
okay? And we're gonna integrate from zero to three halves. And we really, well, I guess we could, we, you know, three halves, if we know this is three X, right? This would be, this would have to be nine halves. Okay. And so we're gonna integrate from zero to three halves. And then it's gonna be the area, right? So the area is this three X minus two X squared squared. And then dx because the thickness of this is my dx. So this is the area. And this right here is the thickness. And because dx means infinitesimally small, all right, it's really, really a thin, thin slice. All right. So we'll put this in our calculator and we'll get an answer for the volume. Okay. So we're gonna go in and press alpha window and then select number four for function integrate. And we're gonna integrate from zero to three halves. So three divided by two. Um, and then the integral, now we need to start a parenthesis, okay? And it's gonna be three X minus two X squared. And then we close the parentheses and then we need to square that. So just double check every single time, okay? So I'm just double checking 3x minus 2x squared, yes. And I'm gonna square that, yes. And then moving over and making this dx. And there's our answer. So 1.013, okay? So we'll go back and we'll record this. So from our calculator, we get a volume of one point zero one three all right let's go to the next problem so for this one the region r is enclosed by the function f of x equals x squared that's the parabola right here so we know this is f of x equals x squared and i'm going to do this one totally with the calculator using y1s and y2s so i'm going to let i'm going to put in y1 is going to equal my f of x, which is the same as x squared. Okay, so that's just gonna be a reminder for me, all right? And then the horizontal line, y equals negative three, that would be this one right here. That would be y equals negative three. And the vertical lines, x equals zero and x equals two. So x equals zero and x equals two. If the region R is, is the base of a solid, such that each, each cross section perpendicular to the x-axis is a rectangle, rectangle. So we're going perpendicular to the x-axis. We have a rectangle whose height is half the length of its base in the region R. So the base is in region R. So this is my base right here. That's what that's telling me right here. Okay, so this is my base. That's the base because it's sitting in the region R, base in the region R. And then whose height is half the length of the base. So whatever this is, the height's gonna be half that, okay? So I take that back. I'm not gonna use this Y1. I just realized <clears throat> it, would be get to, it would be good to get B, but, but I'm gonna have to do more work, okay? Um, so let's, I'm gonna draw this out, okay? So this would be my rectangle. This would be my base. So this length right here is the one that's sitting right here and it's coming up out of the page. It's coming straight up. It's like if I could tilt this up and turn it and put it right here, it would fit right here, okay? This would be the height. And what it's saying is the height is half the length of the base. So the height is half the base. Okay, so the area for this rectangle, okay, it'd be base times height, right? So base times height height but we know this height we can replace with half the base so that means the area is equal to base times one half the base or the area is one half the base squared okay so now to get the area we got to figure out the base right well the base is again going to be top minus bottom so it's going to be this x squared so b is equal to x squared right minus negative three 
So that means my B is X squared plus three. Let me get rid of that little mark I just made right here. All right, so we know we're gonna start creating these rectangles right here at X equals zero. So we don't need to find an intersection this time. And we're going to end them right here at X equals two. And that all tells you right here to here, right? Okay, so the volume of this is going to equal the integral from 0 to 2. The area of the the area of the rectangle, right? And that would be we're going to we're that would be 1 half times my base, right, which is x squared plus 3 and we would need to square that. So 1 half x squared plus 3 squared. And once again, these thicknesses, okay, it'd be my dx right here. So that would be my thickness. Um, if you wanted to, to put this in the calculator, it might be easier just to, ah, I don't know. It's just up to you. It's really up to you what's easiest, okay? You could bring the one half out because that's just a constant. So one half times the integral from zero to two of x squared plus three squared and then dx. I don't know. Um, it's really up to you. Like, which one's easier to put in the calculator? You know, who knows? All right. It's up, it's, I'm going to leave that up to you. Okay. All right. We'll put this in the calculator and we'll get an answer. So, we're going to get the fraction bar so that we get that by pressing alpha x. And then we want one half in our fraction. And then we want to use the integral, right? So, alpha, then alpha window number four. And we're going to integrate from zero to two. And what we need to integrate is, th now this parenthesis again, like up above, this parenthesis right here is just telling the, c the calculator what you're integrating. And so we can't put a square on the outside of that, okay? So this one's gonna be x squared plus three. And then that quantity, we're gonna square that. And then the thickness of these are dx. And I'm just double checking on everything and pressing enter we get 20.2. So let's go back and record that one. So we got the volume is about 20 point, well, not about, it's actually exactly 20.2. All right, let's do the next one. So again, we want the region R to be the enclosed um, by the functions f of x equals three square roots of x and g of x equals three halves x. So this curved one is the square root function. So that's gonna be my f of x which is equal to three square roots of X. And then the line here is my G of X and it equals three halves X. If the region R is the base of a solid such that each cross section perpendicular to the X axis. So again, we're gonna, we're gonna draw these perpendicular to the X axis is an isosceles right triangle with a base in the region R Find the volume of the solid. Okay, so we have a nice, we have an isosceles right triangle. Okay, the base, then that would be the leg of it. The leg of it would be perpendicular to the x axis. Okay, and that would be my leg. That would be one of the legs. Now it's isosceles, right? So this right triangle is coming up with the same height as this base right here. Okay, so we have this. We have an isosceles right triangle. And this is my base, that's this length right here. And I know because it's an isosceles that this would have to be the same length. So the area of this would be one half base times base or base squared. So now how do we get the base? The base would be the top function minus the bottom function, right? So that would be three square roots of X minus three halves X. And then we want to start this. Okay, so this point right here is zero, zero, because I put zero in here, I get zero out. So that'd be zero, zero. But what's this point? Now it looks like it's four, right? Four comma six. Okay, so, so what we could do is you could solve it. All right, so three square roots of X is equal to three halves X. 
What I would do is multiply both sides by one third, and that would give you the square root of x is equal to one third times three halves x. Your threes cancel, and you're left with the square root of x is equal to one half x. Okay, and then what I would do is I would square both sides. So you get x is equal to one half x squared. And so x is equal to one fourth x squared. And then I'd move my x over to the to this left hand or the right hand side. Okay. So that would give you zero is equal to one fourth x squared minus x. And out of this, we can factor out an x. And let me scoot it up a little bit. So we can factor out an x and then we'd be left with one fourth x minus one. And then the next thing you could do, all right, and this isn't the only way is we could say x is equal to zero or one fourth x minus one is equal to zero. Here we can multiply both sides by four and we would get x minus four equals zero. So x equals four, so it was four, okay. It would be, so this would be, the square root of four is two, so this would be four, six. Okay, and let me slide back up. So this point right here is four, six. All right, so now we know we wanna start making these um, isosceles right triangles right here at zero, and we wanna stop making them at x equals four. So this would be the, the volume would equal the integral from zero to four, the area of this, okay, so the area would be one half times the base squared and the base is this three square roots of X minus three halves X squared. That's the, this right here is the area of one of them, right? And then the thickness to get the volume would be our DX. So this one half I'm gonna bring out. So that makes one half the integral from zero to four of three square roots of X minus three halves X squared and then DX. And then we'd put that into our calculator and get an estimate for our volume. So for this next one, um, we're gonna press alpha X again for one half. and then go to the right and then alpha window and select number four for function integrate. And then this time we're gonna integrate from zero to four. And then what we're integrating is the, we gotta open a parenthesis and then three square roots of X. So three and then square root. So we have to press second X squared for square root and X and then get out of that and then minus and then I'm gonna do a fraction bar again. And this one's three halves. And then X. And then close the parenthesis for that. And then we need to square that. And then DX. And rounding to three decimal places is 2.400. So we'll go back and record that. So this would be 2.4. Zero, zero. Okay. All right, that's it. Let's go to the next problem. So for this problem, again, we have the region R enclosed by the graph of FX equals X cubed minus two. And so X cubed minus two is this curve right here. So that would be my F of X is equal to X cubed minus two. And the horizontal line, y equals negative one. So that's this line right here, y equals negative one. And the y-axis. So this would be right here, okay? If the region R is base of a solid such that each cross section perpendicular to the x-axis is a semicircle with diameters, diameters extending through the region R. So what is happening is this is a diameter right here okay and it's perpendicular to the x-axis so we're going to draw it this way and this is a diameter so i'm going to label it d that's the diameter of our semicircle okay 
and then um, find the volume of the solid, right? So we have this. Okay, that's the shape that we have. So this, this side right here, what you're seeing right here, that's the diameter and that's sitting right here and it's coming up off the page and then coming back down to here. So you're seeing just like a cross, well, cross section, that's why the cross section areas, right? So this is my, this is my diameter, okay? But really what I need is half of that, right? To get the radius, all right? So the radius is equal to one half the diameter or diameter divided by two. Probably D divided by two would be the best way to do this, okay? And so my area is one half because it's a semicircle, pi r squared, and then I'm just gonna replace r with this D over two. So my area is equal to one half pi times D over two squared. And you could clean this up a little bit, you know, this would be one half pi times, and this would be D squared over four. So this actually could become one eighth pi D squared. So, okay, so then that means like we, we need to get D, right? And I'm gonna come down here to get, to write my D. So my D, okay, it's gonna be the top curve, which is negative one minus the bottom curve, which is this X cubed minus two. So the diameter here is gonna be negative one minus, um, and I gotta put this in parentheses, X cubed minus two, cause I have to subtract all of F of X, right? So I gotta, I gotta put that in parentheses if it's a sum or difference. Okay, so that means the diameter here is negative one minus X cubed plus two. We can combine the negative one and the two, and that makes a diameter of one minus X cubed. Okay, so that means I'm gonna integrate and this intersection point right here, okay, is really gonna be, all right, we can look at this and go, all right, when X is one, right? That'd be one cubed minus one, that's negative one. So this point, we can tell by plugging it in that that's the right point. This point right here is one comma negative one. All right, you could also do, you know, X cubed minus two is equal to negative one. And that would mean X cubed is equal to negative one plus two, which would be one. And that would mean X is equal to one. All right, and that's what we thought, right? X equals one. Okay, so that means the volume for this is gonna equal an integral. And we're gonna start making these semicircles right here at X equals zero. And we're gonna end them at one. And they're gonna get smaller. They're gonna be biggest right here. And as you go across, these semicircles are gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And then really right here, it's just a point, okay? So zero, two, one. And then the area is going to be 1 8 pi times my diameter, which is 1 minus x cubed squared. So this 1 8 pi, that's why I, I simplified this more. This 1 8 pi, you can pull all the way out. So that would mean we have 1 8 pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of one minus X cubed squared. And you know what I forgot? I forgot my little thickness DX, right? All right, so we can put that in our calculator. All right, and we can come up with that, all right? And then for this one, again, we're gonna do the fraction bar and then one eighth. And then we need pi and pi is second the exponent key, the caret key. And then we need to integrate. So alpha window number four for function integrate. And we're gonna integrate from zero to one. And then the function we're gonna integrate is gonna be, I'm gonna start a parenthesis and then one minus x to the third, come out of the exponent and then close the parenthesis. And then we need to square that and then dx and then press enter and we get 0 
two, and that's our volume for this one. And for this one, we get 0 0.252. Okay, so I want to say, okay, I didn't do any that were um, perpendicular to the y axis, okay, but you easily could have, it would just be, you know, instead of drawing our diameter this way, we would be drawing our diameter this way, and then we'd have to rewrite it so it's, this is an x value, and this is an x value, so we'd have to solve this, right, for, for this x, okay, and then we would just take this one, which is on the right, and this one on the left, and that would, that would make up our diameter, okay? So if we switch this, okay, and we said perpendicular to the y-axis, we would actually, sh we should be drawing our, our diameters this way, okay? Delta math, which I gave the assignment in this, um, and so it doesn't have any vertical ones. So that's the only drawback about delta math is you, you do need to be prepared, but really it's, it's, it's no different, right? It's no different, okay? All right, guys, that's it um, for today. So you guys um, go do your homework, all right? Bye, guys.